if I could sing, I would sing you my philosophy, but I'll just say it, which is anything breasts can do, thighs can do better, sung to the song of anything you can do, I can do better. Just keep that in your head. But I can't sing, so I'm not gonna do it. Hi friends, welcome back to our pantry season of everyday food. Today I'm making chicken piccata and the pantry ingredient that we're focusing on today is broth. I often use broth in sauces and soups and really basically anytime I need a little bit of liquid I use broth unless it's a sweet thing because it adds more flavor, right? So I keep um, one or two containers of store-bought broth in my pantry at all times and once it's open, I just keep it in my refrigerator or I freeze it depending on how much cooking I'm doing that week because it's extremely, extremely useful. And for today's recipe, this chicken piccata, I'm actually using chicken thighs. I'm gonna pound these till they get a little bit thinner, but before I do that, I'm gonna get my side dish going because that actually takes a little bit longer to cook than the saute and I want them to come together at the last minute perfectly timed. So it's a braised broccoli rob, really simple and one of my favorite ways to eat broccoli rabe. I don't know if you guys are familiar with broccoli rabe, but I find it super duper delicious. Here it is, I already have some cut up. It's pretty inexpensive. I find it delicious cooked this way because it gets a little bit sweet. It actually is kind of bitter, and you might find that if you're sauteing it or something, it's bitter, but if you braise it, which is cooking in a little bit of liquid, it gets really sweet and tender and nice. So this is a bunch of broccoli rabe that I have cut up into about two inch pieces. To a pot, add a couple tablespoons of oil. You don't really need to measure in this. I tend to go pretty heavy on the oil for things like this because, well, it's delicious and it adds flavor, but you can measure if you want to. Two cloves of garlic, they're crushed. Once you start smelling the garlic, then you can add your broccoli rabe. All of this broccoli rabe just goes in. You're not trying to get like a quick cook or a saute or anything, so don't worry if it feels like the pan is kind of crowded. It's totally okay. That's the sound I like to hear. This is not one of those moments where you're looking for that fresh, quick moment. We're braising it, so it's gonna cook. I mean, it's a short braise. It only takes about 10 minutes but we're gonna cook it down. So you'll see when it's done, it's sort of an olive green color. Add about a half a cup of broth. This is the store-bought broth, chicken. I find chicken broth to be the most neutral. There are vegetable broths. If you're vegetarian, you can certainly uh, reach for those. I'm not as big of a fan of beef broth. So um, I'm just saying like standard chicken broth, have two containers in your pantry at all time and you'll be prepared for almost anything. <laughs> you know, anything cooking related. And so now I'm gonna turn the heat up on my skillet. This is a large cast iron skillet. I'm gonna start getting it nice and hot because I'm gonna saute my chicken thighs in this. This was four skinless, boneless chicken thighs. And in order to saute properly and evenly, you wanna make sure that your chicken is of an even thickness. Just makes it easier to cook. The chicken cooks through more quickly. So um, meat mallet. For years I didn't have a meat mallet and I was always insisting that like, well, it's just as easy to use like the bottom of a small skillet to do this. And then I, I was like, you know what? Treat yourself, get a meat mallet. It works a lot better than the bottom of a small skillet. But if you don't have a meat mallet, you can use the bottom of a small skillet. Or if you have a French rolling pin, the kind that doesn't have the, um, the ball bearings in it, the, just like the piece of wood, that works really well too. Now I'm a proud owner of a meat mallet. I feel like, really, I've been cooking for like 30 years professionally. <laughs> Nothing like a meat pounding shot. Really get people excited. Okay, even enough. I have this between two pieces of plastic wrap, keeps the mallet from getting all gooey and gross. Then you're gonna season it and lightly dust it in flour or dredge it in flour. That adds to uh, two things, really. It helps it brown and it helps the sauce to thicken. This is a dish, I'm just gonna dredge them right in here, so I'm gonna transfer my a little bit of flour. Then season your chicken with salt and pepper. Here's my secret method for seasoning things that have to be turned. Season the first side, and then since I have this dredging mixture right here, turn your chicken over right into that dish, and then season the other side. 
I do this a lot too when I'm seasoning something that's just going directly into a skillet. I'll season the first side and then put it in the skillet and then season the second side. Now you know everything I know. <laughs> that's it. Our work here is done. Looks like my broccoli rob is really simmering pretty vigorously, so I'm just going to turn it down um, and give it, first of all, give it a stir, then turn it down. And it cooks for about 10 minutes. You don't want it cooking too, too high because that'll cook out all the liquid and you want it to be steaming. If you find that it is cooking too quickly, which I just did, which is why I'm saying that, just add a splash of water, a little bit more broth. Broth would be perfect, but I have this measured out for my sauce, so I don't want to use it. But, you know, broth equals flavor. So now I have my hot pan. The chicken is just in this flour, but you want it coated on both sides, so turn it to coat. Most recipes you'll find for a chicken piccata will use a chicken breast, but I just love chicken thigh, and literally 90% of the things that call for chicken breast, I think chicken thigh is as good, if not better. If I could sing, I would sing you my philosophy, but I'll just say it, which is anything breasts can do, thighs can do better, sung to the song of anything you can do, I can do better. Just keep that in your head. But I can't sing, so I'm not gonna do it. Add a little bit of oil to your hot pan. You can see it's hot, it's smoking. Um, and then you're gonna, oof, maybe I got it too hot, but we'll be okay. Add your chicken to the pan and there will be some sizzling, which is good. What you want to do for this is get the chicken brown, almost completely cooked through, but not totally, totally so that it doesn't overcook. Because you're going to take it out, make your sauce in the pan, and then add the chicken back. So you can slightly, slightly undercook it. My pan got a little bit hot, I'm not going to lie. It's cooled down now because I added the chicken, so I got a little bit of like, over browning, but it's gonna be okay. I have faith that this dish is gonna come out delicious. When it is at that stage where it's almost done, take it out and put it on a plate. My pan got really dry, so I'm adding a little bit more oil. Not called for in the recipe, but I'm making a sauce that is thickened with flour. So there was flour on the chicken, which helps with the thickening of the sauce, but this sauce also gets a tablespoon of flour that you want to sizzle in that pan. Then you add your capers, two tablespoons of capers, and then your broth, three quarters of a cup of broth. And this is standard procedure when you're whisking something liquid into a roux like this, which is a flour and fat mixture. You wanna make sure you add just a little bit at a time so that it doesn't clump up. This isn't a ton of liquid, so with this method in a really hot pan, some of the liquid could evaporate. Well, definitely some of the liquid will evaporate, but if you feel like you're like, oh wow, it's evaporating more than I want it to, you can always add a little bit more. Um, now what you can do is turn it up and whisk kind of briskly. And hopefully what will happen is as it comes to a boil and you're whisking, any of those little pieces of flour will break up and that will happen. As you can see, it's smoothing out. The sauce is nice and thick. Add some lemon juice, three tablespoons of lemon juice. So that, I would say it's like half a lemon plus half of a half of a lemon. Butter, this is a tablespoon of butter that thickens the sauce, gives it silkiness and like a really, really nice texture. And then you can put your chicken back in. The chicken will further thicken the sauce. Juices from the plate definitely should go back in. What you're gonna wanna do here is adjust the texture, right? So if it's too thick, add a little bit of more broth. If it's too thin, cook it a little bit more. So if you add, if you're, if you're at this point and you see it and you're like, oh, whoa, this is like really, really, really thin, don't put your chicken back in, just reduce it a little bit and then add the chicken back in. Remember that there's flour on the chicken so it will have a little bit of a thickening effect. But look at that, it's a really, really nice silky sauce. All those flour lumps I was worried about, they're gone. You want to give it a taste. It might need some salt because there's a lot of acidity in there and salt balances acidity. But pretty nice. Let's throw that in. Tanginess from the lemon, brininess from the capers. It's a really nicely balanced dish, I think. Time to eat it. I like to serve this with a little bit of rustic bread. You could serve it with noodles. Egg noodles would be good. Orzo, 
rice, whatever you want. But I'm really into this uh, rustic bread situation. Some of that broccoli rob, nice. Nice. That whole head cooked down, I mean, you can serve four. I would eat the whole thing though. Okay. Some chicken. This piece looks good to me. Don't forget some sauce from the pan. Because that's where the flavor and the goodness is. It's getting a little thick. I might add a splash of broth to this. And that is dinner. It takes like 20 minutes start to finish. And there you have it. This is like a quick and savory, budget-friendly meal from your pantry. Enjoy. Mm. If you want more recipes like this, click like and subscribe.